breaking news right now. Metro police on the scene of a reported armed robbery. News Channel 5's Alexandra Cohen just arrived on the scene right there along Gallatin Avenue, not far from downtown. Alexandra, good morning. What have you been able to find out? I know it's really early in the investigation. Hey, Steve, some canine officers are actually tracking an armed robbery suspect through this neighborhood right now. Police told me to stay here in my car because they're trying to pick up a scent. Police here on scene tell me that a suspect apparently went up to a delivery man at Calypso Cafe on Gallatin Avenue, pointed what he believes is a gun in his back and said, give me your money. Again, if you are just tuning in, I'm going to take this shot out here to show you the area of North 12th Street and Gallatin Avenue. As you can see, police are actively searching for a robbery suspect who apparently held up a delivery man at Calypso Cafe on Gallatin Avenue. If you're at home inside watching this right now, police are asking that you do not leave your home because the canine dogs are searching this neighborhood for the scent of that suspect. Back to you guys. All right, Alexandra, thank you very much. Stay safe right there. And a pair of suspected crooks are, this pair is on the run after two robberies happened just minutes apart. News Channel 5's Kimberly Davis joins us now with how they were apparently caught on camera, right, selling one of, at least one of the stolen items. Kimberly? Amy, good morning. Yes, a scary situation for both women involved in this case. And police aren't saying that these men stole the phone, but they would like to talk to them and figure out how they got their hands on this stolen phone that was the phone of a victim of an armed robbery. Take a look at this surveillance images. See if you recognize either one of these men because police are looking to speak with them this morning. Police are telling us the people in the photos are only wanted for questioning right now because they used a stolen iPhone. Both robberies happened at the arbors of Brentwood on Brentwood Terrace around 10 o'clock Wednesday night. One victim tells police she was in her vehicle when a man knocked on her window and ordered her to roll it down, claiming that he had a gun. But the suspect took off once he noticed the victim's dog in the back seat. Police say minutes later, another woman was parked by her building grabbing some items from her car when a man walked up to her and demanded her purse, claiming that he also had a handgun. Now, police are telling us the two men in this store were last seen in a white Dodge Avenger. And in that complex, a witness says that they noticed the same white Dodge Avenger there the night that these two women were robbed. If you have any information that could help police, they're asking that you give them a call at 615-74-CRIME. For now, we are live in Edge Hill. Kimberly Davis, News Channel 5. Kimberly, thank you for the update on that. He is a person of interest in his ex-wife's disappearance. But this morning, the guy is behind bars for trying to kill a different woman. Tyler and Luke was convicted of attempted murder yesterday. Investigators say the 35-year-old tried to drown his ex-girlfriend during a fight on a boat. It happened in Florida back in 2014. He'll be sentenced for that in May. In the meantime, though, his ex-wife, Shelly, disappeared back in February of 2011 after dropping off the couple's daughter at his Shelbyville home. Her burned out car was found in Murfreesboro a short time later. Mook maintains he had nothing to do with Shelley's disappearance in Tennessee. New this morning, a man is behind bars accused of robbing a woman at gunpoint. According to the Kentucky New Era, Russell Edwards and another man apparently forced their way into a home on Bassett Street in Hopkinsville early Wednesday morning. And once inside, police say they pulled guns on the homeowner and demanded she hand over cash and her computer. Edwards was arrested yesterday morning for burglary and robbery. It's unclear if the second man is still on the run. The debate over whether to rename a controversial building at MTSU ended up Muffled by outbursts last night. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Lots and lots of chanting. Some students upset that the ROTC building, named after Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest, known for his affiliation with the early KKK, has not been renamed yet. However, organizations like the Rutherford Historical Society feel that name is simply a reminder of where our country has been and the progress that we have made. MTSU's president, Sidney McPhee, uh, designed a task force in the fall to host several public forums and then deliberate before deciding whether to change the name of that building. A final decision by that committee is expected by the end of April. 
And a man was rushed to the hospital after a bad crash. The Kentucky New Era snapped these photos from Hopkinsville yesterday afternoon. Police say the man was driving on North Main Street when he went off the road and slammed into a utility pole. We're told his injuries appear to be life threatening. And by the way, we just got his name in it. Edwin Long. Edwin Long mm. uh, is in critical condition. No word yet on what caused that crash. And happening today, volunteers will be serving thousands of meals to those in need on Good Friday. That's right. Matthew Torres has been live for us all morning long at the Nashville Rescue Mission, surrounded by a lot of great volunteers helping out down there. And I guess they've already enjoyed their breakfast, haven't they, Matthew? Yeah, they have. In fact, it, it slowed down just a bit. So right now it's really some of the volunteers who are out of town and some of the people who are benefiting from the breakfast that are still here this morning. So any minute now, they're actually getting ready for the lunch that will take place at noon today. This is an annual event for the Nashville Rescue Mission. Organizers are planning to serve more than 4,000 meals to homeless men, women, and children here at the center. So expect to see dozens of volunteers, sometimes even personalities from News Channel 5, to roll up their sleeves to serve ham, green beans, potatoes, rolls, and dessert. Now the traditional Easter lunch, that's what they're calling it, starts at noon, but if we come back out here live, there will actually be a Good Friday Easter service that will start at 10.30 a.m. at the chapel here at the Nashville Rescue Mission. Lunch will be served today, tomorrow, and on Sunday. On Easter Sunday, there will also be a breakfast. Reporting live, I'm Matthew Torres, News Channel 5.